the moment you've all been waiting for. You what? No, <laughs> well, hey guys, and welcome back to the Goss Cast with myself, Ali Ryan, and Ken Rebecca. Hey. How are you? This I week? feel like I do that every week. I'm like, hey. Hey. <laughs> We hope you guys are enjoying the Zooms. I have had a few people say they are enjoying actually seeing us chat. So hopefully other people I know. Are. Some people probably don't even, didn't even know what I looked like. <laughs> There's no real girl called Kendra Becker. Ali Ryan made her up. <laughs> what do you think it's just like you? <laughs> just me. Like, but people always say we look like sisters. I, wonder I know. We actually do, to be fair. We actually do. I feel like the longer we work together, the more we're like morphing into each other. <laughs> I know. Sorry, <laughs> can we check out the the, the fresh colour on both of us? Both of our hairs, like no oh, sorry, people see. listening to the audio, you cannot see but can't see, but we've no roots. Finally. And the nails. Woo! And the nails. I was on uh Virgin Media this week on the tonight show. They like around me, they're like, Do you wanna come into the studio? And I was like, Okay, what's it about? And they were like, we just want you to like show off your hair, talk about your nails. I was like, this is a dream. Great. <laughs> like, no problem. And I was just in the studio being like, my hair, my nails, all good. It was nice to actually be on talking about something positive because like the last few months I've done so much radio and TV. It's always been COVID, like things are so hard, living alone, blah, blah, blah. And this week it was like, yay, life's back to normal. The vaccine bonus, seeing my family. It was all, it was all really, really positive, which was so yeah. nice so different um i feel like so much has happened since the last episode by the way it's coming too late because i had surgery on my gums and i was just too no she was too sore we were meant to do it yesterday but then we were like no. it was all fluffy but what i was going to say was the brits weren't they just amazing this year so so good so i was covering it i did the bits on twitter and stuff on goss and it was just so enjoyable. And like, I always really like the Brits. It's one of my favorite award ceremonies, apart from the Gossies. Oh. And um, yeah, it was just so good, really good performances. There was obviously an audience of 4,000 as part of uh, the UK government's pilot scheme. Um, so it's basically like a test to see how these mass events can kind of come back after COVID. Mm. So the audience was largely made up of frontline workers. I um, loved Love yeah, yeah I, it was really important and they all had to be tested before they even entered the venue and then I think five days a- five days after the event they have to be tested again so it's kind of a big kind of mm-hmm. test scheme thing and um, but it was just so good just the way they did it because I think the past few months you know we've obviously had like the Oscars Golden Globes we kind of gave out about the Oscars before it's just like it's a bit boring yeah you know? So um, yeah, so, and I know so much stuff had to be done on Zoom, but like we did the Gossies on Zoom and I don't think it was boring. We had the crack with people, you know, and I yeah. felt with some of the other awards, it just wasn't coming through. Like the fun vibe wasn't there, but obviously the Brits, it was. And sorry, Jack Whitehall is just the funniest host, isn't he? Yeah, he's so funny. So we just go funny. see him whenever like gigs are back on in Dublin. Yeah, I'd love to see him. He was just so funny. And some of the things he said, I was just like, oh, like he just is really, he's a really good comedian. Everything was so well-timed. But uh, yeah, there was a few standout moments for me. I don't know about you, but obviously Little Mix winning. Like, I, I just can't believe that Best Group was never won by a female band before. I know, it's really hard to believe. And like, especially, I think it's such a long time coming, especially for Little Mix, because they actually always put on huge performances at the Brits. Yeah. They obviously couldn't this year because two of them are pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it was a really big one. And then Taylor Swift was the first female artist to ever win the Global Icon Award as well. How? Um, night for the gals. How is that even possible? I don't understand. But I loved Little Mix's um, speech. Like, I liked how they talked about all the great girl bands throughout the years that they all deserve to win. Um, and they thanked Jessie. Like, you would have to be a little bit sick and to be Jessie for them to win the award right after she leaves. I know. I, I, I'd be interested to know how she actually feels. I know she put up a thing kind of supporting them. She put up a post of the three of them and stuff. Yeah. Um, I'd say she's sickened, like you know. 
you would be and I love that photo I've seen the one where the two pregnant ones are like smiling and then what's the other girl's name Jade oh Jade sorry it's in the middle being like <laughs> yeah uh, so many people were sharing that on Twitter being like I'm Jade <laughs> <laughs> yeah such a big year for Little Mix and they're still talking about going on tour and that they're going to go for it so I'm interested to see what happens there another moment that I loved there's a good few standout moments for me Harry Styles when he accepted the award um first of all he was the only person that wore a mask going to stage like they kind of were told not to bother with the masks but I like that he took that moment to, sh to show he was wearing it because at the end of the day I know it was deemed safe to be there but like he does have so many young impressionable fans I thought it was really good that he actually did do that yeah, and he was literally the only one that did. <laughs> um, but a lot of people were saying he had like an American twang. How do you feel as a Harry Styles? I I am Harry Styles stan. Um, I didn't notice it, but I was probably just staring at him. Like <laughs> our showbiz reporter Sophie, she actually texted into the gospel WhatsApp group. She was like, "He why does he say I'm so American?" And then suddenly it was all over Twitter. So she's also a Harry Styles stan. Shout out to Sophie. Um, but she noticed it so. Is he, he he just finished a movie or something where he's playing an American? Is that right? Yeah, well, like I since One Direction kind of broke up, he's mostly been living in America, so it's not really surprising. His girlfriend Olivia Wilde is American. Uh, she is American, yeah, yeah, she is American and gorge, and I think the yeah. entire world is gel. But he he so he was in the UK at the moment because he's filming My Policeman with um. What's her name again? From the Emma Curran. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why he was in the UK. So he just dropped in to pick up his L award. It's funny because I feel like a few years ago having Harry Styles and Taylor Swift at the same event would have been such a big thing, but it wasn't really even a talking point this year, was it? No, no I think well, they were both at the Golden Globes only like a month or two ago and I think there was a bit of chatter about it there but like they were filmed kind of greeting each other being like hey um so yeah it's actually quite nice you know it's no like animosity or anything no drums no. but today we are going to speak about the drums because we're celebrating the fact that Ben and Fur are back together. Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez, we kind of touched on in the last episode just because stuff has been going down. Obviously, Jennifer Lopez broke up with Alex Rodriguez. And then there was reports that Ben was being picked up by her driver, shipped on over to her house. They were having the chats. We were like, give them the benefit of the doubt, maybe just having coffees, maybe chatting. Then they responded on holiday together. Like, what is going on? I know, because we we spoke about this in the last episode. We were like, you know, the reports are saying they're just friends. He was spotted being picked up, blah, blah. So even we were kind of like, ah, like they're probably just like, like having a chat or whatever. But then when these photos emerged of them coming off a private jet and then spinning off in their SUV, I was like, oh, this is like for real. And like, it's so weird because Ben Affleck has not really been on my radar the past few years. And now I'm like, okay, he's hot again. Oh my God, no. Yeah, no, I think so. I'm officially calling it. I need to have a look at him again because you know me, I like the jaded, just out of rehab, really troubled. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. so I, <laughs> technically I should fancy him based on those things but I actually haven't had a good look at the new photos of them together so I need to have a look but like I think it's just the particular photo of them both in the car I just looked at it and I was like he actually looks a bit hot so but I but I think it's the J-Lo effect she has this effect with people J -Lo glow. I think you're going to feel this way about Dominic West when you watch the air I'm just saying that mm, yeah Probably I need to do that jaded daddy you know that daddy vibe He's got the daddy vibe. <laughs> daddy. Maybe that's Ben Affleck's vibe too. Hmm, I need to revisit this. I need to revisit this. But in celebration of the fact that they're back together, which is literally iconic. Like, I feel like this is like Brad and Jen getting back. It's like so iconic. We wanted yeah. to talk about some of the couples over the years that have rekindled their romances. Um, some ended well, some did not. A really famous one that I actually didn't do any research on, but I said I was going to say, Sienna Miller and Jude Law. You were probably like four years old. 
<laughs> I know, I was just about to say, this is probably before my time. So Jude and Sienna, I'm going to Google the year, right? They were just like the hottest couple, like we talked about this before, about, you know, the types of couples that are spread out across Hello Magazine, um, OK Magazine, all that stuff. That's when you know they're big. Um, but they were together for so long. They were like the biggest I don't know. They were like the ish couple at the time. Yeah, yeah. So they broke up when they were engaged. They met in 2004, okay? Then they got engaged in 2004. So like within the same year. But then they broke up because she found out he had an affair with his nanny of his with the na- It's always the nanny. It's always the nanny. Like... So, but then, so that was 2004 when all that went down. It was all over the world. It was like when Ashley cheated on Cheryl. It was like front page, every newspaper, every magazine, you know, every news station were talking about this split. And then randomly in 2011, they got back together. It was the weirdest thing. She was like spotted on a yacht with him. Everyone was like, Sienna and Jude are back together. She did like a huge, uh, I think it was L one of those magazines she did a shoot said everything was going great that like she gave him the chance everyone was like sorry like you're just back together it's all fine but then they broke up again so that was one of the first times where I was like oh my god it was just such a big rekindling after such a dramatic breakup yeah it's insane I remember like I obviously don't remember because I was probably too young then but I remember them being one of like the big couples and like they're both so gorgeous as well you know honestly like their relationship like threw her into the spotlight like obviously she got Alfie she was in one of two movies but that relationship made her an actual celebrity like that really kicked things off for her but like as the years have gone on Jude has been with so many people he has so many kids like it's actually mental what's gone on since Sienna obviously has her own baby now as well you know, it's mad to see like the difference but another couple that I always think of as well when it comes to rekindling is Kate and Wills and I feel like people forget about this so Prince William and Kate Middleton they broke up before they actually officially got engaged now imagine being in Kate's position okay they called her weighty Katie for years they were following her around since college she put up with all this fucking bullshit for years She's going to be married to the king next in line. Like, it's all worth it, hon. And then William was like, you know what? Let's let's take a break. So they basically broke up. I don't think he said it was a break, but he it turned out just to be a break. He broke up with her, said he wanted time to go living. I think he was spotted, like, skiing in the Alps and at, like, an apre ski thing in a bar. There was oh. people enjoying life. So then Kate, I just love this so much. Kate was like, right, grand, two can play that game. So she, there's like these famous pictures of her in knee high boots and like a little dress going to like a really popular club where the paparazzi always were. Like she went to get popped. And even Royal Insiders say now that like she did that to show Will what he was missing. Mm-hmm. And literally they got back together right after that. And it's so awkward because in their official engagement interview, like you compare it to Harry and Meghan's, which is so lovey dovey, so like over the top. And then you have William, who's so like Charles. I remember in like the Charles and Diana interview, he was like, whatever love even means. You're like, yeah. But in the William one, <laughs> in the William and Kate one, the journalist is like, you know, um, Catherine, like, how did you feel about that break? And she was like, no, not great at the time. Like, she's clearly like devastated. And yeah. then like, I think it was good for us both. And she's literally like, She's like still uh, traumatized over the whole thing. Like, but like then obviously now she's looking who she is now. Like, so that is proof in the pudding. Sometimes you can't get back at your ex and it works out. Do you know what I mean? Like, look what that led to. But I'll just never forget those knee high boots out on the town. I was like, that's how you do. You don't sit around moping and crying. You show them what you're missing. And I think J Lo is doing a little bit of that because aren't there reports coming out that Alex Rodriguez is like, sorry. Yeah, so I think TMZ caught him the other day and they were like, oh, um, <laughs> A-Rod, what do you think of the yeah. J-Lo getting back with Ben kind of thing? And he just said, go Yankees. And Ben Affleck is a very famous Red Sox fan. So that was his way of being like, fuck you, basically. Um, wouldn't you hate to be a celeb in Hollywood? Like TMZ, 
just shouting things at you as you go down the street. <laughs> I know. Jesus, Irish celebs think they have a bad. Like, <laughs> imagine, like, I'm trying to think who would be, I don't know, imagine people screaming at Grania Shoga. Where's Beyonce? <laughs> my gosh, I call them. Running down Grafton Street, like. Yeah, maybe they did back in the day when it was like the days of Colin Farrell and Bono and Bob yeah. running around. But I don't know. The only time we've ever seen screaming is on red carpets, to be fair. That is true. And it's mostly the photographers. It's not us. <laughs> mostly, it's only the photographers. Yeah. They really stab you to get a photo. But um, what I was going to say, what are one of your favorite couples that have really kindled? Okay, so I think we kind of have to talk about Selena Gomez and Justin Bieber. Selena. Which also ties into Hayley Baldwin, now Bieber, um, because it's a whole triangle situation. It's like a hexagon. And like, because remember there was the weekend, there was Bella Hadid. There was yeah. a time where I was like, who's with who? Yeah, there was, there was many people at play here. But um, Selena and Justin, like they were kind of one of the first... So, like, they were very much teenage sweethearts. You know, it was a huge deal when they got together. You know, both young pop stars. Um, they were first linked in 2011. And they were on red carpets. Everyone thought they were really cute. You know, they had magazine, no, like, like, interviews. Have you, seen, have you seen the first ever picture of them on their first date? It's, like, outside an IHOP. And they're literally, they look both, like, 11. They're so young. They're so, so young. And like, I think this is a huge part of this whole story is that I think they were both each other's like first loves. Yeah. It's obviously like really like, you know, intense and stuff. So they were together for a while and then they broke up in like 2014, I think it was. I think they might've broken up once or twice in between then. But uh, once they broke up in 2014, that was like it. Like they were done kind of thing. And the like, fans were devastated. Their like ship name is Jelena. And like there's still J people with Jelena accounts on Twitter and Instagram. Like people are mad about But we them. need to discuss that as well. Um, the stuff that goes on with Hayley and Selena and the fans. But yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, I I'm getting there. I'm getting there. So when they broke up, Justin kind of got with uh, Hayley Baldwin, probably hit her and amongst others. Like, <laughs> so in between, in between, oh, <laughs> in between, um, like being with Selena and then getting back with her later, he was with Hayley. So they had broken up like so long ago. In between, then Selena had gotten with the weekend. Remember that. Mm -hmm whole situation they went to Coachella together they were like a whole thing they went to the Met Gala the Met Gala then, moment of them together was such a moment we were like oh such a moment. yeah so but they did not last they eventually broke up the weekend got back with Bella Hadid we all know the drill um and then in 2017 photos emerged of Justin and Selena on an old bike ride and everyone was like <gasps> Wasn't she blonde also? Yeah, she time. was at the time. And there was some insiders saying they had like gotten on the bike to go get a burrito and there was people in the burrito bar being like they were hugging their, and we were, everyone was like. Everyone was so oh. shocked sure because like, think about it. They had broken up in like 2014. So it was like a good few years later. Everyone thought they were so done. Their relationship, uh, the way it ended was like, you know, it was bad. And this is um, only like very, very shortly after Selena broke up with the weekend. Yeah. yeah. So everyone was just so shook over the whole thing. And yeah, paparazzi caught them like a good few times. Now they never actually posted photos together on social media. They kind of they kind of tried to keep it on the download, but then at the same time they were caught like all the time together. So Kind of not really. I remember like her mom came out and like totally slammed the relationship. And there was like loads of reports that her and Selena had like fallen out because she went back to him. Yeah, there was a lot of that at the time. And then even saying that her friends weren't really happy about it either. So yeah, everyone kind of was like, oh my God, but kind of thought maybe it won't last. And it did not. So in March 2018, they broke up. And... 
the reports emerged that they had broken up and then that Selena had, you know, patched things up with her mom and stuff like that. So everyone was kind of like, oh, that was sad. And then just like a few weeks later, Justin was spotted hanging out with Haley again, Hayley. which was just like, oh shit. Cause like, you know, that they had obviously been together before. So was, I'd say when Selena saw that she was like, how dare like, you? You're always worried as a woman, I feel that your, your boyfriend is going to go back to his ex. There's always that worry in the back of your mind. There's always one hot gorge ex that you're like, is he still obsessed with you? And then you're in a relationship and they're like, no, babe. And then they get back with them after. Like, I would be fume. And Hayley is so fucking beautiful as well. I'm I mean, like, so is Selena, you know. Jesus, he is. No, I know, but I'm just like, imagine being Selena and having these worries and being like, God, that girl is so hot. And then not only did he, you know, not only was he spotted seeing her, he fucking proposed out of nowhere. Yeah, so only like a few months after they'd broken up. So it was in July and it happened in the Bahamas. And everyone was so shocked over the situation because people only kind of found out that he was back with Haley a few weeks yeah. before. And then all of a sudden she was spotted with this rock on her finger. Like it was huge. Remember there was a the video of him, there was like reports yeah. like, in her restaurant in Barbados, Justin went down on one knee and everyone started dancing. The reports were so weird, but then the video came out and they literally were just like dancing around. Yeah, and everyone's just like, what is going on? And then making matters even worse, months later, they secretly got married at a courthouse in New York in September. So this just happened in such a short period of time. And then it was actually really, really sad. So the following month, so in October, a report came out that Selena had entered rehab and that she had had an emotional breakdown. I don't think it was solely to do with the whole Justin and Haley stuff. She had a lot of health issues as well. But, but I doubt the Justin and Haley stuff helped at all. So from from the outside looking in, it looks like Selena left the weekend to get back with Justin. She thought this was it. He was the one. Because remember when she was dating Abel, Justin was commenting on her pictures. This all is what kicked it off. I don't know if you remember this. Mm, yeah. He was commenting on her photos being like, you used to be mine or something about being mine. And there was all this drama being like, why is Justin like all of a sudden, you know, like mentioning her, commenting her. But it was after she had done like the red carpet debut with the weekend. Yeah. So I feel like she broke up with him, went back to Justin. It's like, this is the one, like ripped up her relationship with her mother. Basically was like, fuck it to everyone. This is my guy. They obviously had been talking about spending forever together. Like there must have been like, this is it. Let's do this. And then something happens. There's another breakup. And then he's like, actually, this is it with her. And then just marries Hayley. And the thing about Hayley and Justin, right? I actually think right now they're in a really good re relationship. And I think that like, they probably are going to make it. Like they seem really happy. But at the start, do you remember there were so many photographs of them having like emotional arguments on the street and like both of them would be crying. One time he was holding a Bible and they were crying. All these weird pictures kept coming out. And then she did like an interview saying that marriage was really difficult, but they work on it every day. I was like, you're married two weeks, even dating six months. Like what is going on? It's only going to get worse <laughs> from here. It's only going to get worse. But the thing about all this that I find sad is like, I do feel really sorry for Hayley. Like she's Hayley Bieber now. They're married. She's the one he chose. But the amount of hate and paranoia around Selena fans. Like I even see sometimes on TikTok, these videos coming up being like Hayley or you know, Selena Gomez wore this dress. Two weeks later, Hayley Bieber also wore a black dress. And like they'll have quotes from Selena in a magazine. Six months later, Hayley said this. Like they think Hayley's obsessed with Selena. Mm, it's so strange. And I think like, and I think we've spoken about it on the podcast before, how dangerous stans can be, you know, like this whole stan culture. And like, we even see it on Twitter sometimes if people are responding to a goss story. Yeah. They start having these crazy rows, like it, in the comments and stuff. It's just insane. And I can't imagine like being the brunt of that kind of abuse. And like, sometimes Justin has come out, hasn't he? And he's been like, you have to stop with this. And like people pitting her and Selena against each other. Like, it's just, I'm sure even Selena's over it now. Do you know what I mean? Like, 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure she's spoken out about it before and been like, please leave her alone kind of thing. It's so weird. But I remember like when he was first with Hayley, because that was after him and Cena broke up the first time, right? I remember there was something that had gone on and Justin put up this big Instagram post complaining about his fans or something. And I remember Selena commenting, being like, maybe it's because your girlfriend and your fans, something, there was something to do with the girlfriend. Like they always were kind of still commenting on each other's stuff. That's why it was like inevitable. They were going to get back together. And then she released, you know, that song, What the Heart Wants. It's such a sad song. When she released yeah. that one, I remember she did an interview with Ryan Seacrest about their breakup. It was right after they broke up. And he was like, God, who knew you'd get so in love and so heartbroken so young? And I was like, God, it is so sad. Like, they met so young. I feel like they were set up to be a celebrity couple. Like, the pictures of them on their first date are so staged. Mm. I don't think it was meant to happen that they actually, like, fell in love. Yeah, like, I, yeah, I agree. I'd say it was, because we know that happens, like. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and I'd say she's written so many songs about him, like even her most recent album, like Lose You to Love Me, that's all about Justin and about their like most recent And then the reason I liked this hexagon situation, like remember The weekend released his album and then he talked about like giving a limb over to Selena. So he had offered, obviously, because remember she had, lup she had lupus and she needed a kidney transplant wasn't it kidney yeah and her friend ended up giving it to her and then he releases this song basically being like fuck you you left me in the you left me behind you dumped me i offered you my kidney that's basically what that song says no i love it and like all the well i don't love it but like no, you, you know it's, it's great so to follow and connect the dots you know i'd love to see selena in a new relation you know yeah, she was linked to someone last year. Um, I think he was an NBA player. Um, yeah, I, I could finished. be wrong about that. No. Um, but I don't think it actually was really anything. Um, but she's flat, she's flat out at the moment. Oh, bless her. What, what's she flat out doing? She's flat out at the moment. She's like, she's filmed a good few movies kind of back to back. Um. So she's probably just too busy for a man right now, you know? Yeah, I feel for, I would like, if I had made this life-changing decision of breaking up my boyfriend to get back with my ex and it turned out this way, I wouldn't be happy. I'd be like, right, that was a risk that wasn't worth it. Um, but sticking with musicians situations, um, Zayn Malik and Gigi Hadid, this is another one with a good ending because they have a baby now. I know it's very cute so this is obviously another one with plenty of drama as well but as you said it does end well yeah. um so Zayn was very famously in a long-term relationship with Perry Edwards from Little Mix we all remember it we, we all saw the photos and they split up in 2015 and he very famously ended it over text and she has spoken about it it was really bad. And remember we, why? There was all these cheating rumors. There was pictures of him in bed with a girl. Not good, not good. So people were fuming with him at the time. And then to make matters worse, only a few months later. So I think it was November of 2015. He was spotted coming out of a party with Gigi Hadid. And everyone like, was like, hold up. Imagine. Hang on. Your ex, like he, <laughs> he just like putting himself in their position. Imagine you're you're devastated. The love of your life has dumped you over text. Looks like he was cheating on you. You're in bits, and then you see him with the hottest supermodel in the world. Can you just? I don't know. I think people were actually heartbroken for Perry. People love Perry. I remember at the time there was all these articles coming out saying that Zayn's mother was like disgusted in Zayn's behavior and was really close to Perry and really close to Perry's mom. Like I feel like people couldn't actually accept that they were over. And like let's not forget they were engaged. Oh my like God. I know they were really young. I think I think they were like 22 or something but they were properly engaged. Like how devastating. And then to really rub, like rub the salt in the, in the wound. I'm just going to put her in my debut music video. That's about you. The song is about you, Perry, but Gigi's going to be in it. Yeah, oh God, remember that music video. Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk. Oh, very good song. 
it's so very good, good song um so yeah Zayn and Gigi so since that moment they were like everywhere they did magazine shoots they were at the Met Gala together yes they did Vogue which is a stunning shoot stunning and shoot. then March 2018 remember where we were Ali we oh, were I think we were having dinner in Alfie's I was like, are we in New York? <laughs> no. in Alfie's. We were having dinner in Alfie's and then Zane and Gigi, they both put up the exact same yeah. statement on Twitter announcing their split. We were like, holy shit. Um, I'm pretty sure I did the article in the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, that happened and everyone's like, what the hell? They both said their split was amicable. Blah, blah, blah. The usual kind of shit. Then... Only a few weeks later, only a few weeks later, they were spotted kissing in the street in New York. And everyone was like, sorry? <laughs> Which one is it, lads? Like, are you together or are you not? So that was really weird. They were back together for a while. But then I think at the end of the year, they were just broken up again. And then, so I'm trying to think of the dates here. Yeah, so it was only so good at remembering them. You're like 9 p.m. I know. It was April. I'm like, how? <laughs> you know. um, so, yeah, they had broken up then. And in between, Gigi had been seeing this guy that was on The Bachelorette. Oh, yeah. Remember that guy? What was his name? Tyler. Tyler Cameron, is it? He was hot. That's like, that's like the most American name I've ever heard. Tyler, Tyler Cameron. Tyler Cameron. Um, yeah, so she had kind of been seeing him. Zayn wasn't really linked to anyone. I don't think he was. You actually, yeah, he wasn't. Yeah, he wasn't. I mean, he has her eyes tattooed on his chest. I know. And there was loads oh. of reports coming out at the time that, you know, she couldn't deal with his issues and stuff. And everyone's kind of like, oh. Um, but then uh, Christmas, around Christmas 2019, reports started coming out that they were back together. And everyone's like, oh, right. So very much on and off but then this time it seemed like they were legit. legit and then yeah like proper legit and then fast forward March 2020 Gigi and Zane announced that they're having a baby like have we seen a picture of her face ever the baby's face yeah um not really kind of but not really I feel like that child is going to be gorgeous default her eyes his eyes his skin mm. like sorry yeah see they they've ended well so far like I mean it looks like it's going well that's one of those things where it's like they you know they got back and now they're having a baby like when you look at the One Direction guys you know the whole Liam Payne Cheryl thing like I found that relationship so weird and then as soon as Cheryl had Bear Liam was like right I'm off off on tour I'm just gonna leave. Yeah. I'm gonna promo the album. Whereas with Zane, it seems like he's fully there, doesn't it? It seems like, yeah. I I don't know if I ever really believed Liam and Cheryl's relationship. I know they obviously had a baby together, so it obviously was real. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. The but authenticity I, I, of the whole relationship. Yeah, but um, I'm hoping good things for Zane and Gigi. But I want to see that child. I want to see the baby but it's funny isn't it how it's all come full circle like they just had a baby and now Perry's having her first baby with the guy she got with right after Zane well I don't think it was right after she was seeing um your man Luke Pas Pascolino is that how you say oh yeah name? but wasn't this guy, like the first big relationship yeah so I think so um and like she seems so happy I'm actually delighted for her um so yeah good another, times around another couple we have to discuss when it comes to rekindling on and off shall we say is Courtney Kardashian and Scarch 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 <laughs> it's a Scarch the same like um Sean Connery um Courtney Kardashian and Scott Disick like they're one of the they, I feel like they're like the Rachel and Ross of reality it's like will they won't they ever get back together are they meant to be together? Are they soulmates? Like that's just been a roller coaster of relationship. And you know what I find so weird about it? Their kids are gonna literally be able to watch every single stage of their relationship: the good, the bad, the pregnancies, the breakups, the rehab. It's a lot. 
Yeah, it's crazy because they they only started dating in like 2006. The Kardashians started in 2007. So everyone saw like their early relationship from the get go. Yeah. And then like it followed everything, their breakup then. And then remember Courtney and Chloe went and did the spin-off series in Miami. That is when yeah. shit hit the fan. Like I think it was thrown at the fan. The fan nearly exploded. There was so <laughs> yeah. And yeah, oh my god, I'd actually love to rewatch that again because that was insane. I did. I rewatched it like two years ago, and it was actually like, oh my god, how did they let this go on TV? I know. So basically, what happened was Courtney and Scott were broken up, and then Courtney and Scott kind of like met up in Miami, and then they got together one night, and she basically fell pregnant with Mason, and. They, it's a whole thing at the time they have these big discussions and then they eventually just decide to get back together and then as we all know they had like a very rocky romance for years they were on and off kind of thing for a long time but then they eventually broke up in 2015 um but oh. like, as we all know as well Scott has kind of still always been in love with her and it's like it's really no, hard it's hard as someone who watches it, right? Because in the earlier series, when he was such a dickhead, punching walls, I'm like, that's the time they should have ended it, right? That's when he was like literally dangerous. He was in such a bad way. But like, I feel Courtney actually got angry with him years later when he actually had started to behave. That's when she started being like, fuck you, not treating him well, not really being there for him. And I think that's why it ended in the way that he was kind of like I want more like I don't want this to be over but I think she had so much resentment it's easy to forget but when you go back to those early series there's nights where she's ringing all his friends trying to find out where he is he's showing up drunk he's like trying to see Mason she's not letting him in he's swearing he's gonna change and he's suddenly in Vegas like there were so many things like when you actually watch it back it's exhausting to see what she had to deal with but when they actually broke up yeah was different yeah so at the time he was actually accused of cheating on her with the stylist do you remember that um but yeah I don't know I think I agree with you I think a lot of people forget the like hell that he put her through Mm -hmm. and like that's just the stuff we saw on the show like can you imagine the stuff that actually happened that never made it like to camera I'd say it was insane and even like in the most recent, I haven't watched this series, but the last like two seasons, even when he's dating Sophia, he's obviously not now, like Courtney is still helping him. She's like getting him into rehab. She's like talking to him all the time. She's basically like his counselor and his best friend. Yeah. And she probably felt like kind of like his ma at the times as well, you know? And then when he, when she started dating Eunice, he kind of saw the jealous side of Scott start to come out. It was weird because Scott was dating the whole time. Remember he got with Belle, what's her name? Bella. Oh, Bella Thorne. Like all these young, young, young girls, Kylie's mates, like he was just getting me young people all the time. But then when Courtney started seeing Eunice, it was like a serious thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And now obviously Courtney is, madly head over heels in love with Travis Barker all I know for sure is they're definitely riding they're definitely riding all the time 100% can I just say like at the start I was like oh my god yeah love them they're cool now I'm like fuck off (laughs) like we get it you're in love and you're riding every two minutes like we don't need to like, see it. that picture of her legs wrapped around him and he he's grabbing her arse. I'm like, oh my God, this is so intense. Very you intense. Have children, Courtney. She's always like, my kids, I'm a mom. I'm like, yeah, well, you're a mom showing off your ass with it's your weird mom. I don't think we've ever seen this side of Courtney. That's like, it's whoa. very, it's very Kim and Kanye. Yeah. And I actually, and I'm going to call it right now. I wouldn't be surprised if they like randomly get married. married. Me too. Like Courtney's never been married. Yeah. I think Scott it will really jump off the earth if that happens. I know. And I just, oh, I have so much sympathy for him because like the whole world knows that he's still in love with her. And like, 
oh, and he, they're just never, they'll never get back together. But this is the thing about some of the rekindling to talk about. Like sometimes it doesn't work. Like it's very easy to remember the good. And Scott is probably like, you're the mother of my kids, blah, blah. But she was really hard on him and was sick to death of him. And oh, I don't know. Mm. I don't know how I feel. I do think she, her and Travis could get married though. Mm-hmm. I think so. And then speaking of the Kardashian family, just in general, like Chloe and Tristan, another rekindling I'm not a fan of. Like, I am not a fan not of the fact that she ever gave him a second chance. And now, obviously, most recently, someone came out and claimed they had been with Tristan when he got back with Chloe again, but he's actually filing a lawsuit this time. But it's like, how many rumors can you deal with? Like, I know. Yeah. So the, I think the girl that accused him, her name is Sydney Chase just like an Instagram model but he is like flat out denied the whole thing as you do like <laughs> did he deny the first one though I can't remember uh did he no I actually don't think he did and like it was obviously true because they broke up <laughs> I'm just not a fan of them at all like I've honestly lost a bit of respect for Chloe just as like a mother as well I just feel like when she had true, like obviously she was an emotional wreck. But like, if I was in her position, the one thing I'd want is for my daughter to grow up in like a good atmosphere. I certainly wouldn't be one be adding siblings from the same father who cheated on me while I was pregnant. Like I can't understand where her thinking has come from in this. Mm. She obviously believes he can change. He's denying the rumors, so maybe it didn't happen. But like. Would you not be living the rest of your life constantly worried? That one night he doesn't text back. That one night he stays out a little bit too late. Wouldn't you always be wondering? Because it wasn't one girl. There was multiple stories. Multiple, yeah. And like, ha- have you watched any of the latest season of Keeping Up? No, I need to watch it. Uh, like, if you watch it, you'll you'll get it. They're literally shoving Tristan down our throats. They're trying to get us to like him that much. And it's just not happening he's like we so have so cringy oh and like, not forgotten what happened with jordan like we have not forgotten it was front page news you know and like they even have him doing confessionals with chloe it's so weird the way they have the whole thing done i don't like it at all and is yeah i will never good? i might watch some of it tonight is it any good yeah it is you know I just really hate him and like I said I lost respect for her and I don't want to see it I like it's honestly one of the reasons I don't want to watch this season I don't want to see Tristan shoved down her throat like he's you know, like he really is shoved and like he tries to make these jokes so I'm just like Tristan fuck off you're ruining the show so, but even like Kim disappointed me when she wished him happy birthday I don't know I just feel like they can be so fake as a family like in general can't they like the way they embrace people like that I just don't get it yeah and then if he does something bad again they'll all unfollow him they'll do a Larsa Pippen on it and it's like we have to accept what decision they make who's in who's out who's cool who's not and I'm like I'm not up for this game you know yeah like I just think it's unfair like obviously what Jordan Woods did is not okay and it's bad no one ever do that but the way that they cancelled her, well, like Chloe in particular, with all those tweets and stuff. Her tweets. And it's like, oh, Tristan's on our show now. And he's like getting paid to be on their show. Makes and no like, sense. Remember when it all first happened with Jordan, Chloe did write all those horrible tweets being like, you broke up my family. Even though everyone from LA to Timbuktu knew that they were not together. Like they were not dating when the Jordan thing happened. They were not together. Still wrong that it happened, but Chloe and Tristan yeah. were not a couple. Um, and then they did that whole season. That's when I really started to s- stop liking the show. Remember that season where Chloe's like, oh, I have a headache, so I can't do things tonight. I'm like, you weren't seeing Tristan at the time. They kind of made out that like, I just can't see him tonight. It's like, no, he ran to the house and didn't bring you over. Like, that's what happened. And then brought Jordan over. Um, but I just found that c- season really fake Kylie lost her best friend like obviously you wouldn't condone what happened but like yeah. it takes two to tango it takes two but yeah let's see how that 
it's going to be interesting to see what happens over the next year with them. Like there's obviously another baby on the way. Yeah, so that's actually being documented in the latest season, which is the last season here. R.I.P. Uh, R.I.P. Um, yeah, they're thinking about getting a surrogate and stuff. I'm just like, do you Why? really want to do that? Why? Why? Oh, I don't know. I feel I get car crash vibes. I honestly do. Mm -hmm. Who else is on your list, Kendra, of couples that have rekindled? So... We could not do this list without mentioning this couple because they are like an iconic couple to me because I kind of grew up watching Miley Cyrus. You know, she was the Disney gal, then like obviously is now a really popular singer. Um, so her, Miley Cyrus and Liam Hemsworth. Oh, RIP to this couple. Another hexagon triangle situation sometimes, I think. Really? Well, just because the whole thing with Caitlyn Jenner. Oh, yes. Yeah, so this is kind of like, obviously, after they broke up. Yeah. So, Miley and Liam, so they started dating back in 2009 when they filmed that movie, The Last Song, which is such a good movie, by the way. Love it. I should actually rewatch that soon, but it's really sad. Um, so they started dating in 2009. And they got engaged in 2012. Everyone was loving them. They were everywhere, red carpets, all the crack. But and sorry, then, remember though, oh, did they not break up right before the engagement too? So they, yeah, so they actually, they got engaged in 2012 and then the following year they broke up. Sorry, you're talking about right. this time. Yeah, but yeah. then they like rekindled their romance. So I think, yeah, so they broke up in 2013. And then in 2016, so they spend like a good amount of time apart. Mm. So 2016. And I think in between this time, Miley had her like bangers era. Remember when she cut off all her hair. Came in like a wrecking ball. Working, yeah, all that shit. Perfect. Yeah, because remember, I think wrecking ball is about Liam. Yeah. Yeah. She did the most she outrageous went, performances and everything around that. Remember, she just went wild yeah. for a while yeah so then 2016 happened and they were spotted together again she was spotted with a ring back on her finger they were basically like really back together i just say on a totally like off note i'm obsessed with the engagement ring that even got her it's a vintage ring gold massive diamond i always think of that when i think of the ring that i want so for anyone yeah. watching <laughs> please get me that ring so yeah they so they stayed together for ages and then things kind of ramped up then when so remember their house burned down in the malibu fires and like when i say burned down like it was gone sure chris yeah like and it was really devastating for them and i think miley was away at the time and liam had to like sit because they had like loads of animals together so cute uh, they had loads of animals and he had to like rescue all of them like they had like horses and pigs and all this stuff oh my god i know and he had to like rescue all of them put them in a trailer and stuff um, i wish this had been documented with liam with the shirt on. <laughs> like, so that whole thing happened and she has since said like in interviews that it brought them a lot closer together and they'd obviously been engaged for so long so they were like right will we just get married so they secretly got married then in Nashville, which is her hometown, yeah, in uh, December of 2018. And like the photos were so cute. And it was like such a full circle moment because I remember in the captions of all their photos, she was like 10 years and stuff. And it had been like 10 years since they had filmed the last song and obviously like started dating. Um, so yeah, like it was just so cute. I loved them as a couple. But then it was not to be. So only like seven, eight months later, August of 2019, shit hit the fan, like in a fucking major way. So a huge statement came out basically announcing their split. Everyone was like, what the hell? And then literally, like, I think it was the next day or maybe two days later, Miley was packed kissing Caitlin Carter, the ex of Brody Jenner in Italy. Everyone was like, what? Logan the gob offer. Yeah. And remember Liam ended up getting pictured with some young model from Mexico or something. 
Yeah. So he, yeah. Who, who was she? I don't know. There was a picture of him in a car park kissing her. I just remember that. And I was like, oh, that's weird. But the, the Miley Caitlin thing was so weird. And not only that, she also brought out songs so soon after uh, Slide Away. And she performed it at like the MTV Music Awards. And it was, that was such a good performance. Thing. Such mm. a good performance. She was literally singing from her feckin' soul. Like she was devastated. The song is all about the two of them breaking up. And it was interesting when they broke up. Like remember a lot of sources were saying that like Liam's family were like not into Miley at all. And like, especially yeah. during that wrecking ball era I think when they broke up they were happy they broke up they weren't happy to see how Miley was acting how she was dressing blah blah obviously I disagree with that sort of mentality but that's what they had been saying and then when they broke up for good a lot of sources again on Liam's side were like everyone's just relieved he was having a really difficult time that sort of stuff but like some of the songs that she's written about him she like mentions kind of as if he's into hard partying kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's Miley, but her lyrics would make you think it's him. Mm. Yeah, like in um, is it that sideways song? Like she kind of mentions like whiskey and yeah. Like I don't know. Done with it was weird, but it was it was really sad. But it's funny, like a lot of couples I think get back together when there's trauma, and like she has said since, like if it wasn't for the house burning down. They probably never would have got married that it just their house they lived in together like burned to a crisp it just was such a traumatic thing and remember when the Malibu fires happened so many people lost their homes it was a really devastating time mm-hmm. I actually went to LA a couple of months after that for the Oscars and I stayed in Malibu Do you remember I stayed in Malibu for a few days and I drove around and it was honestly so so sad people were living in caravans like there was still black tar on the roads like big gaps for where houses had been the towns were so quiet like Malibu was a shell of itself so like imagine going through that with this guy that you've always loved like of course you're going to be like right let's just do this you know but it's sad how it all happened and what's his story is he dating someone now yeah so he's dating uh this Australian actress Gabriella Brooks and obviously Miley so she was with Caitlin for only like a hot minute like they were together for a month and then they broke up and then Miley she was with Cody Simpson they were together for like almost a year but then they broke up last year that's another thing where had they no they had never been together before they were friends before but they'd never been together oh I thought she dated when they were like teenagers no they were just friends so Cody Simpson yeah. this is like another full circle thing Cody Simpson dated Gigi Hadid for years before she got with Zane yes sorry I forgot about that yeah, it was her it's mad when you think of young Hollywood like they're all just so hot so famous it's sickening <laughs> like it's... I know and then only recently now I don't know if there's much to it but Miley was kind of caught like getting very close to young blood over in LA, which is so random. That is so random. But yeah. And then Liam seems to be loved up with your one Gabriella. So I think we <sighs> to finish on that very sad note of Miley and Liam. You're so right. They were kind of like the ish couple of, I suppose, I wouldn't say my generation, maybe your generation. I'm only a few years older, but like, I just feel like I didn't care much about them, but I feel like you were like. Yeah, no, they were like a big celebrity. For me, it's like Justin and Britney. That's my like, like if they were couples that I ever would want to rekindle, it would be Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt, Britney Spears and Justin Timberlake. Um, Winona Ryder and Johnny Depp like they're the people that I'm like oh my god or like Johnny Depp and Kate Moss Johnny Depp and any of them to be honest any of them like there's just so many relationships that were just so addictive at the time you know could you imagine if Brad and Jen ended up together oh my god that would like truly break the internet but that's like, what I'm saying this whole benefit thing is like that it it's is. like that it's kind of magnitude it's the same era if Ben if Jen and Brad got back together I feel like I'd be like I'd be happy if like life is complete I get it. <laughs> yeah, you've completed life like I'm I understand it's just like it is like Ross and Rachel it's just so weird but um yeah I'm trying to think is there any other couples I would love to see back together that 
split and devastated our souls when they broke up. Well, Maura and Chris, I'm already really upset about. I know. I want them to get back together. Sad sometimes. There's been so many celebs, but you know, I think obviously there's always divorces, there's always splits, but I think when you're a celebrity, it's a whole other level because you're dealing with so much, there's so many trust issues. You're both trying to not be in each other's shadow. There's so much travel, there's tours, there's gigs. Like it must be genuinely really difficult to keep a relationship properly going. Um, and as we saw during the lockdown, like a good few celebrities broke up. I think people actually got to know each other <laughs> during the lockdown and they were like, shit, like, no. One act- one celeb couple that devastated me and I'd love to see back together, but it's never going to happen is Channing Tatum and what's her name again? You're like, I, I forget that. Um, mm, okay. I'm look it up. I think it begins with J. How have I forgotten her name like that? Actually, you're like, I'm so devastated at somebody that I don't remember the name of. Jenna Dewan. I okay. said it began with J. Okay. Yeah. So Channing Tatum and Jenna Dewan, like obviously they met when they filmed Step Up, which is a oh gas. It's more like, upsetting when they've met on set, isn't it? You're just like, I know. Because, because you, you, like, you feel like you're a part of their romance, you know. But anyway, we shall we shall leave it there on the <laughs> devastating note of all these couples, and we will see you again next week. Bye. Bye. The moment you've all been waiting for. You what? Well, that hit the spot.